Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for stopping by. It's so good to see you. I'm Daniela Sarate, and I am a current graduate student at the University of California, San Diego, in the Division of Biology. I'm a honeybee geneticist. I study everything about honeybee genetics and some of their behavior as well. And I'm here with Dr. Alyssa Abbey, Professor of Geology at the California State University, Long Beach. And we're both members of the Science Communication Organization the Biota Project, and we're here to talk about our latest endeavor, the Cosmic Cultures SciArt Gallery. We started the SciArt Gallery at the beginning of the year. It's called Cosmic Cultures, and it's all about understanding different astronomy and cosmology from civilizations and cultures across space and time. It's been super cool. I've learned a lot and we thought it'd be fun to make a little video episode about our experiences curating this gallery. So Alyssa and I are part of the Biota Project. The Biota Project was founded back in 2015, which was actually a couple of years before Alyssa and I joined. And it is a grassroots science communication organization that's interested in leveraging art and a mixed media approach to communicating science, making it more accessible for groups that have been historically marginalized by Western mainstream science, and in particular to explore and highlight issues that lie in the inner section of science and social justice. And part of the way that we've been doing that has been really interesting, specifically focused on that mixed media, multimedia approach, where we're combining visual um, aspects with audio, with video, and then in throughout all different types of mediums. And so we've got people on the team who write poetry and songs and people who are singing and adding to the, the musical component of that, while others are much more into the painting and the drawing and sketching aspect. Um, uh, I have been so inspired by everyone that I've met in the Biota Project. We are such a creative collective of writers, artists, scientists. I mean, we're most of us are scientists to some extent, but you know, not all of us are scientists and not all of us are artists, not all of us are writers. We're all, we all bring something different to the table, which is super cool because we're such a diverse group and we have such a diverse range of interests and skills and what we consider, you know, our creative outlet. So before we get into the details and specifics about our latest sci art gallery cosmic cultures i wanted to take a step back and talk a little bit about what biota is who we are and how we got involved in this organization in the first place let's start with you Alyssa, and then i'll talk a little bit about my experiences um, because i believe that you were in the organization before i was and so you were have you been around the organization a little bit longer than i've been so um, can you tell us who you are, Alyssa, how you found Biota, how you got involved in Biota, and how the organization's missions and ideals aligned with your own? Yeah, definitely. I, um, I'm a geologist, so I study, uh, my research focus is uh, tectonic movement and how different tectonic interactions affect the surface of the Earth. Um, and, uh, you know, I was finishing up my PhD and, and starting to get into doing research as a postdoc when I realized that one thing that I was missing in all my, you know, research was that I really liked this idea of like telling your science as a story instead of just like fact, 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 and paper, 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 paper. Right. I'll be reading like a, a book, a fun fiction book. And remember, I remember all the characters. I remember everything that happens. Two years later, somebody can start reading it and we'll talk about it and I remember everything. When I read a scientific paper, it's like 10 minutes later, I forgot everything. So how is it that I can like remember one bit of writing and not another? So that's what really got me interested in looking into storytelling for science. Mm -hmm. And when I was doing that, I came across the paper that the Biota Project wrote in 2018 mm -hmm. for the SICBI conference that they were part of. And I just emailed the group and heard back from, from the founder, Saba, and uh -huh. since then, uh, been uh, working my way into the organization. 
Oh, wow. So cool. Thanks for sharing that, Alyssa. Oh, that's mm -hmm. really interesting. Actually, this is the first time I have heard your origin story. Oh, cool. <laughs> How you got into biota. I had a very different experience, actually. I've always been interested in science communication, but I've never thought about it in terms of a career or in terms mm -hmm. of even um, like extracurricular hobby work. And the only reason I got involved in the first place was because one of my best friends, Jessica Monterosa Mena, she uh, suggested, she was part of Biota, she still is part of Biota, and she looped me into it. She um, thought I would be interested in it because um, often she would notice that I would post a lot of science communication type stuff on my social medias. I love sharing science, you know, information to all my friends and my family on social media. And so I was always making these really informative, educated, you know, sciencey posts on Instagram. Yeah. And Jess thought it would be a perfect match since she saw I was doing that kind of stuff anyway. She kind of just looped me into Biota. So Alyssa, this year is super exciting because we're debuting our SciArt Galleries at the Biota Project, which is a really cool, innovative new concept that we've never done before in the Biota Project's history. Yeah, and you were the one who came up with that idea. I mean, where did you get that? I love, I love the like calling it a gallery idea. And I, and I just I was curious about how you came about with the idea itself. Yeah, that's a funny question because we, um, at the Biota Project, when I first joined, I was, it was a very like free formed organization. And I was pretty much given the task of creating science communication content for the org. And besides that, I didn't really have any guidelines or structure in creating content. So I would just create all kinds of random content. Um, it, there was no rhyme or reason to it. And I got myself, it confused me because one day I would be posting about mushrooms and the next day I would be posting about black holes or something. And I felt it, like it was very discombobulated and I just didn't, it felt weird to me. I needed a little bit more structure in my life personally for me to feel um, that I was making something a little bit more cohesive. That's when the idea of Sci Art Gallery came to me. I remember a couple years back, I went to a, a, a gallery on whales in the San Diego History, Natural History Museum. And it was all about whales and it was about whale history and whale science and the cultural significance of whales to different like uh, Pacific Islander cultures. And it was multi-artist, it was multimedia. We had immersive interactive exhibits we had TVs, we had, you know, like whole whale skeletons. It was super cool. And I liked the idea of being so immersed in a particular concept or a theme and having all kinds of ways to engage with that theme. And so that was my idea behind Sci Art Galleries. Yeah. So at the beginning of the year, Alyssa, we had a whole conversation about what was going to be our first Sci Art Gallery. And I remember me and you after, I think we were like after a meeting or something, we were talking about what could, you know, possibly be our first Sci Art Gallery of the new year. Yeah, I remember when we were talking about it um, in December, you know, getting ready to plan for this. And what I think sparked it was... Um, was that you were going to go camping and watch a meteor shower. And, yeah. and, 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 you know, I have so many great experiences from being a kid and watching meteor showers. And I was really jealous that you were going to go out to this, this place. I think you went to Anzarago, mm -hmm. which is just like so great because there's not any light pollution from nearby cities. You have really dark skies. And so it's actually a perfect place to view those types of meteor showers. And so I think that's, that's really the spark, right? That started it. We were just like, what are you going to do this weekend? Oh, I'm going camping to watch a meteor shower. What? You know, <laughs> it was great. <laughs> oh, right. I totally forgot that was why we decided on this. It really inspired me uh, for this Sci Art Gallery theme. Also, I just, I'm such an astronomy, like cosmology, physics, astrophysics, science nerd. Like, if I was not a biology major in college, and now I am uh, currently pursuing my PhD in biology. 
and studying honeybee genetics. But if I was not a biologist, I would definitely have been an astrophysicist because that is my second love beyond after biology is definitely astronomy and astrophysics and all that stuff. I just think it's so fascinating. It's so cool and it's so universal. And one mm-hmm. of the reasons why I um, thought this sci art gallery, um, astronomy, cosmology, and the cultural lens behind it would be such a cool topic is because different cultures um, throughout history have done such amazing astronomical work, you know, that even today we're like astounded at how cultures that didn't have modern technology were able to so accurately predict things like eclipses and um, solstices and equinoxes. I've definitely learned so much because I'm, I'm reading a lot, you know, in order to create the exhibits for this gallery. I know, and even the, um, you know, researching and making the, the exhibits, the, even just reading the exhibits themselves, right? There's so many great little tidbits of information with every one of the new uh, exhibits that come out on, you know, we put them on Instagram, we put them on Twitter, we put them on Facebook, and you can just read these like short snippets that are so informative and really, really interesting. And, and we have a combination of photographs, combination of like paintings and drawings from Biota members, as well as featured artists, which has been really fun. We've been able to feature different artists in this, um, this gallery as well, which is, which is really a, an important aspect of what we've been wanting to do with these galleries. So I've been having a blast and I jumped on board because I've always loved astronomy and, and thinking about the universe and the solar system since I was a kid. I mean, like I used to like think about it, like memorize the planets and memorize all the stuff that you could when you're like in science in elementary school right and related anything that was related to astronomy that was like the cool stuff mm-hmm. and like right. buy books on it I mean I even found this book <laughs> and I, can, I can show you more about it but it's like it's called what's out there and the reason I bought it is because it said on the top forward by Stephen Hawking and I was like an 11 year old and I was like Stephen Hawking oh my gosh this is so cool <laughs> so so I've been having a blast too because uh you know stepping away from the full-on science aspect and thinking about the history of where we've come how our cultures have like learned and used these different signs and signals and like patterns that you see in the universe Mm -hmm. for different meanings in their lives and in the way they live and like it goes like so so far from you know just um you know you think of these like old myths that are myths to us, but then find out that they mean something because they actually are related to the growing season or actually related to, you know, like there are components of these myths as we call them that actually are helpful in life, you know? And that's why these different cultures used them and like referred to them. Like how else, if if you're not writing down stuff or if you're not, you you need to have some kind of pattern to follow. Yeah, I've definitely had a lot of fun um, making some of the uh, the drawings and the art that that went into the the, the exhibit. And I see that you've made a wonderful background of a variety of our exhibits up there. They look so cool when they're all you know collaged together like that. And yeah. uh, I believe you made that exhibit um, on your right there of mm-hmm. the. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you point to it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that exhibit and that drawing? Yeah, so I was taking, um, you know, during the pandemic, um, people were trying to figure out what you can do, you're bored, you're stuck at home all the time. And a friend of mine who was an art major started doing, she put out on Instagram, put out on Twitter uh, that she was going to be doing art classes. And so each week Mm -hmm. she would just do a very chill Zoom session Mm -hmm. and we'd have a specific topic. And so we did like drawing hands drawing a still life like all these different things and and one week was hand lettering which is I didn't know what it was at the time but Mm -hmm. it's like uh creating like drawing to make it look like those cool fonts that you can select on your computer and so like the really curly q fonts or the big bold ones or all these those different names when you're you know you're choosing your font but you can actually like draw it yourself, you know? Um, and so she did a whole class on depicting a phrase or even just a word in a specific hand lettering style that, that 
mm-hmm. that was for, for each person who was in the art group. Um, mm-hmm. It was like, how does that reflect the meaning of the word or the phrase? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I had been thinking about, I mean, I constantly think about weird space stuff, but I had been reading this book <laughs> and I had been reading this book called Parallel Worlds. Mm-hmm. And, and it was, it was all about like string theory and M theory and like these really like far, far, far reaching, like very physics and math heavy mm-hmm. scientific topics that like I would never approach on my own. Mm-hmm. But the way the book is written is like, it explains the theory, mm-hmm. it explains where it came from and the history behind it in such a way that it's fo- you can follow it, you know? And so it was actually a really interesting book because then you're like, oh, I've, pe- I've heard people talk about string theory, but I never really understood it. Oh, now I understand it because the way that it's explained. I mean, um, Michio, um, Kaku is the author and he explains it so well. It's just like, it's like interesting, almost narrative and like a story style, but, but full of information. And the history part is really neat. Like how we moved from one theory to the next, mm-hmm. um, to get to string theory, to get to M theory and things like that. And so, so I was, since I was reading that, I, um, I had this in my mind. And so when I was taking this hand lettering class, I was like, what do I want to write about what do I want to make like a little phrase of and so (laughs) I chose to write in a parallel universe Mm -hmm. and then I put dot 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 after it because Mm -hmm. the more I think about parallel universes the more it's like infinite Mm -hmm. possibilities right Mm -hmm. and like the fact that you could have something slightly different in one world and slightly different in another and it changes everything and so that's part of where like I did this sketch and I started with the hand lettering and then went and I was like you know what I think it means more and I started adding (laughs) in like colors and other like weird symbols that like whatever popped into my head you know so I like shifted away from the hand lettering and went into like what this book was making me think and feel and then putting onto paper yeah, it's interesting. Parallel worlds have definitely is something that I've always been always fascinated about myself too. And what's interesting is that we often think of parallel worlds as like a modern, you know, 21st century concept and idea that it just came, you know, people just thought about it, you know, within the last 50 years or so. But it's crazy how actually ideas of parallel universes have been around since antiquity, you know, like ancient Hindu civilizations in their ancient, you know, holy texts of the Vedas, they talked about the idea of parallel worlds and parallel universes and about general relativity, which we often ascribe to an invention um, by Einstein. But in fact, that idea, the concept of general relativity, parallel worlds, multiverses, that stuff is pretty old, actually. But it's, it's not really recognized because it's not... Uh, it's not a it's it wasn't seen as um, or it's not Western it's not Western yeah. science and so it's largely ignored or discredited or it's just unknown yeah. this CyArt gallery has definitely been a lot of fun and I've definitely learned a lot of things and I'll still continue to to think a lot about astronomy and cosmology as I'm sure you will too Alyssa but I'm really excited for what we have planned next, um, our next SciArt Gallery, which should open March the 1st or so. Yeah, the next SciArt Gallery is, is going to be all about us. It's going to be just a review about where we've come from, what we've been doing, and how much we've changed throughout the years. And we're also going to be talking about this really cool idea that we've been cooking up behind the scenes. And that is a zine production of Biota's SciR Galleries. We're super interested in zine culture and making zines. So zines, for those of you who don't know, are small print, uh, small circulation magazines, either in digital or physical format. And they're pretty mixed media. You can have whatever you want in a zine. It could be full of creative writing. It could have drawings, images. And we're just interested in in creating a zine for every SciArt gallery that Biota produces throughout the year and having it all kind of collated into a, a really cool little magazine format, which we think would be fun to disseminate to all of our audience and anyone who's interested in a particular theme. And... Uh, I think the themes this year are going to be really, really interesting. I mean, we started off with this one, Cosmic Cultures, has been really fun. As Daniela said, we're going to talk about our 
evolution as an organization, but then we're moving on to the science of sports and how that affects your health. Um, we're going to move on to the environment and how that affects um, your immune system in different um, areas. And so I think it'll be really neat uh, throughout the year to, to expand on these. And all of those will be, you know, one and a half to two month long type galleries like we've done here with the Cosmic Cultures one. So um, we're really looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm excited to see what we do with the zine and stay tuned for upcoming details. And we're always looking for new members to join us. So if you're interested in checking us out and becoming part of the team, do not hesitate to drop us an email, drop me an email, letting us know who you are, um, if you're interested in joining, and we would love to bring you onto the team. And reaching out to all of you to get ideas for this is really part of our goal. So if you have any ideas for future uh, galleries or people that you want us to highlight, we write articles about different scientists and, and the cool stuff they do, then feel free to, to comment at the, at the end of this and, and let us know what, what you want to see. All right. Thanks so much for joining us this lovely evening and hearing a little bit about what's going on with our current SciArt Gallery, Cosmic Cultures here at the Biota Project. Thanks so much for your support and uh, we'll catch you in our next video. Bye.